yogurt? <laughs> yogurt? That's what you got offended over? <laughs> you know, fans give you that um, patronship and they can take it away at any time they want. Hey, welcome to Skull Origin. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to be talking about entitlement. This is hopefully one of many. We have a better setup in the works. But for now, stick with us. Let's go. Alright, so before we get too far into it, let's get an actual definition of entitlement. It is the fact of having a right to something the amount to which a person has a right, and the belief that one is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. Now, I think this applies to a lot of people in Hollywood, but also on YouTube, I've found. Do you know, you have any? Well, um, <laughs> entitlement can be, it, it, I think it can be other things too. I've got another definition here that it says a government program that guarantees and provides benefits to a particular group. I find that to be a funny inclusion, but I think for our purposes today, we're probably not talking about that specific part, but the state of being entitled. But the state of being entitled, I guess, is you, you feel like you're owed something, but you, you might not have earned it. So Even if you have earned it, I don't think the world automatically owes you something because you're breathing and living and breathing and so on and so forth. But do they owe you something because you have created something? Just because you create something doesn't mean it's appreciated. That's so true. a lot of times with YouTube, and YouTubers specifically, um, they think that because they've grown their YouTube channel, they have YouTubes, uh, they have videos, they have different types of channels, they have fans, that suddenly they start taking those fans for granted, personally my thought process anyway and we've seen that over the past couple weeks with some of the larger more known with people like Rylan Adams, Trisha Paytas and being discussed if that was entitlement if she was doing the same thing as Rylan Adams. I mean I know you're not big in the YouTuber world so you're not. Well um, I think the thing about entitlement for these people is that I have to kind of take the, um, the idea, I have to take the, the logic that they have earned what they have to yeah. some degree, but I think mm -hmm. that even somebody that's earned something at some point can show a, a lack of appreciation for what they've been able to achieve because, mm -hmm. and I think the entitlement comes in where you know, fans give you that um, patronship, and they can take it away at any time they want. Oh, so and they have. you have to continue to earn that, even if you have already earned it. So I think maybe it, it, there is an argument to be made that it is entitlement, but I think it's also just you've been—they've been there so long, and they think that that they'll always be able to to be there and if they lose a few fans maybe it doesn't matter because they still got a lot of other fans and that is not true you can continuously lose fans till you have none that's true <laughs> i mean we've seen eh, we've seen that happen to some celebrities where they've been taken so far out of the game that they just don't come back and a lot of youtubers don't need to come back that's true. That's a whole other conversation. There's there's probably several people in Hollywood that should go away and, and not come back. That is true. But that is very true. It seems like people in Hollywood tend to have a better division between their personal life and their professional life too. So, and I, I wonder sometimes for most of these YouTubers, I mean, obviously not all their most personal stuff is online, but it does make me wonder what the separation is for the personal lives because Hollywood is very professional on camera and then your personal life is like interviews and stuff. It's all very structured and you know kind of what to expect, but it's like these YouTubers can make a video, say something bad, post it on the internet, nobody else is going to tell them that they can't and they could ruin a part of their career very quickly where, you know, Hollywood, they have managers and agents and maybe some of these YouTubers have managers and agents they too. They do. But, do, but also, I think a lot of this comes into play that social media 
is their downfall. A lot of times, Hollywood, social media is the downfall. And same with YouTube. I mean, they're on a social media platform, and yet somehow they still haven't learned what is right and wrong to say. And I think a, a really good uh, example of this, and one that I really want to talk about, is Demi Lovato. Oh boy, there's the name. <laughs> so, I was not a huge fan, but I was a fan, um, especially when they started talking about mental illness and how they had gone on she, he, they, whatever. I don't know what their pronouns are, um, but I know they had gone on about mental illness, eating disorders, and I was, I was glad that that was being spoken about somewhere in the media because it's it's spreading awareness is spreading awareness yes you know no matter who spreading awareness yeah. except when you come after brands because you are so entitled you think the world revolves around you that's that's a hard um thing to defend this, uh, this is a really interesting to me anyway when i was showing this to matt um because it just when, you, when you're watching it alone it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous but then you watch it with somebody else who thinks it's ridiculous and you just realize the gravity of what they've just done to their their career. But before we go too much further, let's talk about what Demi did because some of us may not actually have seen that entire episode. So Demi Lovato, and I did look up their pronoun and I'm doing the best that I can, but it is kind of difficult. Um, they went into a yogurt and decided that the products that were there that were, what do you say, what, 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 sugar-free, that were gluten-free, that these were targeting them. And turned this completely around, called this yogurt shop out on social media and blamed them for encouraging and promoting diet culture. And to me, I'm going to go ahead and say what I think because I have so many opinions. The world does not revolve around Demi Lovato. These people didn't wake up this morning or create their entire business to say, hmm, what would Demi Lovato hate? What would trigger her? Them, sorry, them. What would trigger them? And just knowing that they would show up in this shop. Well, I mean, that's a pretty good example, I think, of, of entitlement or just self-importance maybe in that situation. I mean, because you could argue entitlement, but I would almost say that it's just you just think you're so important that if you're offended, it's a world concern. And I mean, I think that's so much of what's wrong with the world right now. I mean, the world's a big place. We're all going to find something that we don't like. And uh, the thing is, is all those things that you named, as mm -hmm. we talked about, have been, um, they, they're, they're made for certain groups of people that may have other legitimate reasons to need these alternative food Sorry, and it don't. has nothing to do with has nothing to do with diets per se so attacking these people for this in particular is just there's a lot of other things you could have went off on a rant about you know <laughs> well the thing is that really gets me is once they were called out and they were told you know their other people was medical for lack of a better word, we'll say disabilities, diabetics, you know, we could go on. They decided that they were going to be willing to help the yogurt shop to get their messaging right. Basically claiming and saying that that should be labeled so that they aren't triggered. That should, they should be called out. They should be labeled as diabetic. They should be labeled as all these things 
because that m triggers them. So after being shamed, mm -hmm. the apology is not really an apology. No. It's it's more like the kid that calls the kid stupid and you tell the kid to apologize for calling that kid stupid and they say, I'm sorry you're stupid. I mean, come on. You know, you get shamed for it and then you turn around and say, oh, well, we'll help you get your messaging right. That's that's like the most condescending way in the world of saying that I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. You should be sorry. But isn't that also turning around like they don't want that in front of them because that triggers their flaws or imperfections or disabilities or whatever the case may be. Isn't that turning it around is like, I don't want to be triggered by mine, so I'm going to label yours. And I'm going to make sure that when you go in there, I mean, if I was, if, ugh, if I was diabetic, I wouldn't want to go in a shop and be like, ooh, want the diabetic yogurt. I mean, I don't think there's HIPAA laws. I don't think everybody in the world needs to know your medical Right, yeah, there's not there's not HIPAA laws for no reason, and and that's why they don't label something diabetic yogurt, because that by nature forces you to divulge some part of your medical history, and so suffice it to call it any of these other number of things that that's a great synonym for the same thing without singling out somebody's disability. You know, Demi Lovato, I don't know if she has disabilities, I don't know her medical history, but it would be less embarrassing for somebody like her to go into a place like that and be exposed to something like that than it would be to have it labeled and then kind of single out that other group of people. It's just, it just goes back to the whole I have a right to not be offended thing and you definitely don't have a right to not be offended. And if you are going to be offended, yogurt? Yogurt? That's what you got offended over? <laughs> now, I'd also want to point out that we, or mention at least, we are not attacking those that have eating disorders Absolutely or any not. kind of mental illness. I think we can both say that we have either encountered in our lifetime or possibly even struggled with mental disorders ourselves. So we're not bashing that. We're on that same side. But as that side, if I were to say that this specific thing triggers me, I would have to take a look inside and be like, why is that triggering me? That's my issue. That is not the world's issue to fix for me. Because the problem started within you. And the problem's going to end within you. Right. Yeah. You, and they, they, ha they have a being offended at silly things problem rather than the world having a problem of singling them out. I think it's, it, it's really easy in that that hyper-offended culture to think that everything is about you or that if you're offended by something, somebody was targeting you or your group of people. And in reality, I mean, most things aren't done to just single out a certain group of people, especially not, especially not like small groups of people like... And if it was, you would hear a lot more outrage. Yeah. I mean, we would be probably saying something completely different. But this was... A small store. This is a small business. And I know you know a lot about small businesses. They have put their blood, sweat, and tears into this business, I'm sure. And now I can imagine that they had a scary moment when all of this started happening because millions before people had a time to had time to like really react and the internet had time to turn on Demi, mm -hmm. they were probably sitting there wondering, is this going to damage the business that we have put so much effort into building up and it's, it's completely disrespectful to the business owner's efforts that if you're going to go about something like this, if, you're, if you have a legitimate grievance with a business, probably the best way to handle it first is to approach the business rather than blasting them on social media. And if it warrants, maybe lawyers. But there's ways to handle these things other than just flat out trying to destroy their business online just because you know you have the platform to do that. Millions, millions of people saw their rant. Millions of people descended on, and and I also want to put in here, somewhere here, they were called, um, and I believe it may have been by Demi, but don't quote me, uh, diet culture vultures. And 
if you ask me, that's kind of what happened to them the opposite direction. Demi's fans were like vultures. Some of them, not all of them, not all of them. And came in for this ice cream shop. And, I mean, out of millions, if you have a husky, you already know. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I think I think you've just involved yourself in something you can't get out of. But that's that's me. Millions is what that. I don't think this company had millions. I could be wrong too. I don't know. I don't live in Los Angeles. Oh Bay. no! I mean, if even even in a place like that, I mean, they may have seen a million customers. But if it's a small, like it's not a franchise. It's just a, a one rest, one location. This is it's very very sure of a bet that this is their primary thing and that they are going to want to grow from where they are and I, I mean as a, as a business owner you want positive attention especially when you're trying to grow your business and I can just right. imagine the terror that they felt in that short period of time before all of this backfired on Demi I, I mean it just the despair that you would feel in that short period of time, just knowing that if this doesn't go your way, this bully has come in and, and said some things that's going to destroy your business. And at some point, they were a nobody as well, and they would have been just as nervous if somebody had stepped in and tried to do that. But her fans have supported her and been good to her, and... You know, usually when you're in situations like that, you kind of want to use that to give back, not take away. And if you're going to punch, a lot of people say, punch up, don't punch down. And she certainly punched down in this case. Yeah. I I mean, and to move on past that, we've also seen in the past couple of weeks drama channels, or I have, because I'm on YouTube, he lives in his bubble. I watch less YouTube because I'm always making videos or doing something for my like photography life. thing. You've got a have, life. Just I don't say have it. that much of say a life. You've got a life. I'm here making I don't. videos. <laughs> no, I, I, I have some things to do, but you know. Um, but Ryland Adams, another one that I more tend to half yeah. watch. Uh, not Ryland Adams. That's cruel and unusual punishment. I'm sorry. Um, also not sorry. He called out his fans for... At least the guy that called out his fans for wanting more content? For... <laughs> I can't even say it. For wanting more content. But it wasn't... It was a good thing. And the tone put behind it was like... Just an air of... You suck, basically. He, he took it that way. <laughs> so basically, this is somebody who got some... It wasn't even constructive criticism. I mean, constructive criticism no, would have been them positivity. telling him that... It would have been them telling him that, hey, your videos are too short. Instead, he posted a longer video, and mm -hmm. they say, hey, we like this longer content. He's offended. And I think that's... So that's positive I want feedback. more of what you're doing, basically, is what they were right. saying. I want, we want more, more of what of you. you're doing. It's like an encore. But, Encore, and they come back but, out and they do another little bit, but this guy, he gets offended. Yeah, he was offended. <laughs> and I think that goes back to the entitlement. I mean, once you've gotten this, once you have the money and you have the notoriety, I guess, you know, you, you've got to find something negative to talk about. Especially... You kind of have to create your own problems. And isn't that the affliction of um, uh, abundance? I mean... Mm -hmm. If you have no real problems, you, you find them. things to be problems. Yeah, you create them. I guess that's why they say more money doesn't equal more problems. Or more money doesn't equal less problems. Sometimes they can equal more. I guess it all depends on your mindset, too. And what you're doing with that money. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. You could be you doing something money, positive. Positive, other than sitting here. And let's, let's all agree that it is a... Drama channel, drama podcast, and this has nothing to do with our channel. Like we are 
not focusing on drama by any means, or YouTubers, or... But we made this video because we think that fans should be valued, you know? That's true. They have something that we don't have. We, we see the value in it, but it's almost like these people sit on their little thrones, let's call it, for so long that they they take for granted for the, thing, the things that they have. And that's a, that's a very human thing. There's a lot of people that take things for granted. And then they learn later they shouldn't do that. And maybe there's a lesson to be learned for these YouTubers that are acting a little bit entitled and taking their fans for granted. And so we kind of just thought that it would be a good thing to, to address that, you know, because there are fans that, that feel disenfranchised by those um, behaviors of these, these established YouTubers. And they shouldn't have to feel that way as a fan. I mean, if you want more content from somebody that you've supported and you give positive criticism, is that even criticism? It's not yeah. really criticism. It's it's a, it's like a compliment. They were like, well, we're happy that this video is longer than your other ones. They were short. <laughs> you could construe that as being, well, that's an insult to my other videos, but... It's how you spend it. It's a positive thing, and they're just saying, we want more of this long-tail content. Okay, we'll make more long-tail content. The only thing that I can think that he'd be offended by that is that maybe he feels like he has to spend more time creating content because they want something that's longer than what he had been putting out but still i mean we're talking about maybe doubling the length of a, a video I, you're paid well a longer yeah. video means more space for ads too so if you make longer content as a youtuber you, you're gonna you're gonna be compensated from that for that somehow so and i think i think everything can be spun whichever direction you want it to i mean anything can be taken negatively and i think he took more of a sarcastic approach to that because let's be honest the intonation is not there on the computer on your phone through text obviously if you're on the phone with somebody that's different but you're not hearing how they're portraying it and to suddenly turn that negatively what is going on in your life <laughs> like why do you see positive comments, what most people would take as positive, as negative. And I think I, I think a lot of the, the message that we're also trying to get across is that's not okay. It's not okay to make fun of your fans. It's not okay. I think it's important to note that there are people that have done it in Hollywood and gotten away with it. They have. I've heard it in music before, but it's, it's different. It's not like somebody went on a rant about, they put a line in a song that pokes fun at their fans, and some people <laughs> never even notice that. But when you make a rant online, or you make a comment, like, directly engaging with your fans, this isn't like a passive, put it in my heart kind of thing. This is like a direct thing that now it's it's something that fans are going to be offended by i think when they they've been a little bit insulted by other people they probably <laughs> either didn't get it or they just it was one passing comment it, it's it's different and people are definitely it goes back to the being more offended and the being entitled thing you know people are more sensitive to people are more sensitive like this than they used to be and yeah in general. if you have a big following you probably should be taking extra care to make sure that you're taking care of that following and and if they're giving you positive feedback take the compliment it's, they're rare <laughs> I mean, to stay in time i mean it really is it's rare and i think i think that's the message we're really trying to get across is that we don't think that's right we don't think that should be the norm we don't think that people should be taken for granted because they're just a number on the screen. I mean, you know. Right. It's just it's a number game to these people, and they lose thirty thousand fans. Well, what's thirty thousand on two hundred thousand? You know that that's the way they think, and that still sounds like a lot to me to yeah. lose when you're about to get to nearly a quarter million of, of people that are subscribing to you. But you know, I think these people just it's a numbers game to them, and they don't value. I don't think they value the individual. And I guess that's, it's easy to do, I guess, when you're in that kind of position, but it's still not an okay thing to have put out there into the world when you rely so heavily on those fans. We talked earlier about, before the camera was rolling, about how YouTube pays, but it's not YouTube that pays. You're paid based on your viewership, and 
when you insult that viewership, you're the fans are right. You're playing your with your paycheck, really. <laughs> and and that's what I know is not gonna happen. He's still gonna be accepted. He's still gonna make content. He's still gonna make money in the same way that Shane Dawson does. And that's a whole different story for a whole other day. I don't even know which side I stand on that one. Yeah, but you know that's. That, I don't know that that's necessarily entitlement, it's just not... It's not appreciating what you have, it is it is taking things for granted, but I feel like when we're talking about entitlement, we've talked about, you know, feeling like you're in, you're entitled to a certain safe space, I guess, all the time, when you're not, because public is public, you can experience a lot of things. I went to New York City this one time, and I seen some things that I just... Never seen anywhere else, you know, but I approached it with an open mind and I didn't, you know, get all offended and have to make a big rant video about it. It, it just, you know, it, it's okay to not like or agree with everything that you see in the world, but it's not okay to attack those things when these are not things that should be attacked. There are things that we should not allow and that we should openly, you know, denounce, but... The thing is, is you, you, you can't be having that reaction to everything that you just don't like. That's not appropriate. And I'm a big proponent of freedom of speech. I love the Constitution, and I think that that, that kind of that cancel culture feeds into the... It just feeds into just taking away the rights that we were guaranteed, you know. I don't have to like what you say, but I support your rights. Say it. And I think that gets a whole lot into respect, because I know... You're, you're crossing over into respect, and it's, I don't have to like what you're doing. I don't have to agree with what you're doing, but you're still a human being, and you should be respected as one and not treated like dirt because of your color, your uh, sexuality, your religion, any of the above. And I just hit the table, sorry, shook the camera. Um, but, I mean, as a whole, and I know I'm guilty of it. I have I have been in the past, and I think most people are from time to time. They they get in their own head space. They don't they aren't educated on certain things, and other times they're just truly passionate about stuff that they probably shouldn't be. And it it, it just they lose all respect for human beings. And you know, I, I don't have to agree. I don't have to. I can note it, respect it, move on with my life. I think that is that is a probably a great place to kind of bring this video together. And and that, that should be the conclusion of this, is that entitlement leads to all of these other things. And taking things for granted also leads to a lack of appreciation. But it all goes back to respecting what you have respecting your fans if that's what you have and even if you don't have fans respecting other people's viewpoints and opinions at least enough to hear what they say without having to blow up on them or put them on blast on social media it it it's okay to disagree and it's okay to really really disagree i like what i like to say all the time is this country is big enough for everybody but we're gonna have to respect each other and, and i think that's kind of where this comes back around is that these people who are going on these rants, they lack respect for themselves, their fans, and I would argue society as a whole. And isn't that the base of what an opinion is? An opinion is not something that everybody has the same of. That's why we're different. That's why we're human beings. If we all thought the same thing, the world would be boring. Grand. Boring. Boring and bland. <laughs> and, and that's where we need to teach our children that respect. And that's what I really want to do with this YouTube channel specifically. Society doesn't have to be like this. If we can change one person's way of thinking, I mean, that's, that's what I'm getting at. Yes, and... And that, I mean, that's what we're both getting at. I mean, we've had this discussion before. Yeah, you, mean, you, you naturally want to leave the world a better place than when, you, than when you found it. And 
the the things that we see that are coming out of these famous groups of people now, it, it just it, it shows how detached they are from the normal people. And man, I was gonna say something. <laughs> There's room for these people to take a step back and let other people step up and change the narrative because it doesn't have to be like this at all. Yeah, and, okay, what I was going to say <laughs> is that, you know, it, these people, we can ask them to not be these kinds of people, but ultimately, it's on the fans to hold those people accountable. So, mm -hmm. the only thing that we each individually can do is to stop giving these people play. If they do something that you think is really wrong, you don't have to support them at all. I, you don't have to buy tickets to anybody's show. You don't have to watch anybody's content it's up to you as the viewer and so if we want to see this this problem start to go away and we want to see some progress in, in the way of just freedom of speech and, and respect for each other we have to do that for ourselves in what we patronize you can't support people who are doing these things and expect that they'll stop doing them they're gonna do <laughs> what gets them views yeah and if it's controversial, sometimes that's a good thing, and they'll go with that. But if it started costing them fans, they would probably think twice. And let's also note with cancel culture, what somebody has done in their past may not be right. And they can own up to it. But it's not what they've done in the past, how they continue to move forward acknowledging what they've done in the past. And I think that's where cancel culture comes in and this just destroys everything. Because they're like, oh, you're canceled. You've done something bad in the past, and you will forever be a bad human. Yeah, if they ever dig up any dirt on you, it's just this. His this name is, is Mace. <laughs> he's the third character in this film. And, and he's a baby. He's well, actually he fully is. grown, but he's a baby. He's my baby. Well, so, so anyway. I guess that's, before we ramble on too long, I think <laughs> that's, that's all we really have. I guess we shouldn't um, continue to beat this subject. I think we've got our point across mm -hmm. and like yeah, support people who are who are trying to be positive and, and love their fans. Don't support people who are doing things that are offensive and trying to attack businesses. That's not cool. No. Um, if you're interested in seeing more of what we're going to bring, we are going to have better quality yeah, we've coming got some, up. We've got some cool equipment on the way that will make the quality of all this better. Audio and visual both, so if the audio is not that great, sorry. And it will be. And the camera is definitely shaking. He's... <laughs> okay. He loves. Okay, don't shake the tape. Like, subscribe, comment, let us know. Thank you.